Stephen Pollard, you're a believer in free speech, strong believer in free speech. Don't you think cartoons should be offensive? Oh, yes. I mean, I don't think... I think you have to separate out the, the difference between the right to publish something, whether there's a right to be offensive, and I, I strongly believe in that, and whether that means you always have to be offensive, and I don't think you do. Um, I think this is a, an absolute model of how you deal with such a, such a situation. Clearly, there was a mistake made. We're all human. Cartoonists are human, journalists are human, editors are human. Do you mean a mistake? Sorry, just to interrupt, but it's an important the point. The mistake here. was printing the cartoon. Whether but, it was Gerald Scarfs in drawing it, whether it was the editors in right. printing it, whatever. Well, it was a mistake. But was that. it... Are you referring to... I just want to be clear here. Are you yeah. referring to the timing, which was, uh, you know, a, a matter of particular offence to some people? I think the or timing, in general? I think, I, as it happens, I think both. I think the timing was grotesque. Uh, clearly, I think we have to take what Gerald Scarf says at face value, and he didn't know that it was... Yes, it's clear he didn't know. It it's, it, I think that's very clear. Um, but actually, I think the cartoon itself is disgusting. I think it's, it, it, it's some of the worst kind of anti-Semitic blood libels being repeated. Whether there's the right to publish such a cartoon is a different issue. Okay. I think it was a misjudgment, and I think News International have handled it absolutely right in saying, you know what, it was a mistake, we're sorry. OK, Steve Bell. Um, Stephen Pollard says he believes in free speech, believes in the right of cartoons to be offended, but, I mean, just paraphrasing what he just said, we heard it, this was over the top. What's your response? Well, I, well first I'd like to say it's, uh, it's astonishing that uh, it's the first time I've ever heard Rupert Murdoch apologise for anything, you know, all his many crimes through his life. But uh, I think you know, apologising for this cartoon, which in fact for once was, wasn't a bad cartoon. I think uh, Stephen Pollard invokes terms like the blood libel and uh, kind of genocidal hate rage. He's attributing this to a cartoon which is actually uh, uh, it's sort of like a mirror image of the cartoon that uh, Scarf did the week before, which is about President Assad doing exactly that. I think he was clutching the head of a baby the week before, which is even good to, to be more offensive. No, no, not a squeak about that. Um, the problem with uh, the State of Israel and the, if you like, uh, the Zionist lobby is that they never acknowledge the crime of ethnic cleansing upon which the state was founded, and that's, that's a permanent problem. It's always going to be a difficult issue, okay, and it's always going to set people at odds like this. I mean, we get into a one-two, nose-to-nose, and start to uh, well, let me, hurling let me just But if that... you use the term blood libel as loosely and as ridiculously as that, blood libel refers, I think, to a medieval belief that the Jews actually ate their own children or ate Christian children, which is not actually a current... Um, idea that's abroad. Okay, let me, no, you, nobody's actually saying. Okay, hang on, hang on. You've made a series of strong points. Hang on, you've made a series of strong points here. Steve, you've made a series of strong points here. Stephen Pollard, come in at this. I'm interested in your assertion that nobody's talking about the blood libel. You know, I would have thought that as a cartoonist, you look at other cartoons. Do you not look at the Middle Eastern press? Do you not look at that, ever? Do you not well, look you're, at the Well, you're, you're attributing a kind of genocidal, genocidal rage, and racial rage. Hang on, so one at a time, please. Stephen, yeah. make your point. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I was, it is an absolutely current, regular, almost weekly image that is used in the Arab and Middle Eastern press about Jews. Um, this is absolutely on a par with that. Now... You know, we can argue till the cows come home about whether the cartoon is anti-Semitic, whether it's offensive, whatever. The fact is, Mr. Bell may not like it. And indeed, you know, the difference between what Gerald Scarf and News International have done and what The Guardian have done with Steve Bell's own cartoons, in November, he had a cartoon of Benjamin Netanyahu as a puppet master with... Uh, William Hague and Tony... It wasn't Blake as a puppet hand. master, it was as a Harry Corbett figure with a little glove puppet. Now, that's the first well, absurdity, well, so don't start well, repeating that nonsense. No, well, hang on, hang on. Stephen, hang on, look, I'm going to try to, 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 to separate you two for a minute. Stephen, please, you've made a point. Steve Bell, just hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Stephen made a point about the cartoon. Steve, you respond, what did that cartoon show, and why do you object to what he said? Sorry, what, what, the, the, the cartoon that was just referred to, the Puppet Master cartoon. Explain oh, the, exactly well, what it showed. And it, it showed Netanyahu. It was a cartoon specifically about Netanyahu. It wasn't about the Jews or the Jewish people or the Jew as some kind of manipulating evil genius. It was instantly taken up by some sort of lunatic right-wing websites who ran it alongside... Uh, something they plucked out of the Sturmer, which bore no resemblance to it. It wasn't based on it, had no relationship to it at all. My cartoon had Netanyahu with a rather pathetic, tiny little glove puppets, one of whom was William Hague and the other one was, was, was right. Tony Blair. But made the main image was of Netanyahu himself, surrounded now, by why, these missile like flags. Why do you now, think that that's unacceptable, he's Stephen Pollard? Because the guard well, he's he's hang on, hang on let on Stephen Pollard behalf, respond. Which I refute utterly. I, right. I, I, it's full it, it, of the guard. Let, let, let Stephen Pollard respond. Would be nice to get one word in. Yep. Um, sure. 
in a way, this whole discussion is surreal because I defend The Guardian's right to print such a cartoon and I defend The Sunday Times' right to print the Gerald Scarf cartoon. What I'm saying is if you print such cartoons, you have to be aware of the consequences. And one of those consequences will be that some people will describe those cartoons, I am one of them, as anti-Semitic. That doesn't mean that I would ban the publication of such cartoons, but I think if you're going to draw such images, you have to be aware of the cultural resonances and you have to be aware aren't of you, precisely who you're giving offence to. Aren't you in danger of uh, saying that there is one Prime Minister in the world about whom an offensive cartoon of this kind no, no, cannot be least. drawn, and that is the Israeli Prime Minister. Have a look at the Israeli press. Every single day yeah. there are cartoons about Bibi Netanyahu that sure. are, you know, gr gr grotesques, as it were, but they do not slip over the edge into what I would consider to be anti-Semitism. Do you ever censor yourself, right, sorry, Steve my, Bell, my in the question of taste? Broken. Hello? What's happened? Oh, have my, you lost us? I, I, I'm, it's, my headphones are going in and out. I well, uh, just a last word. I mean, uh, Stephen Pollard makes the point that, you know, there are offensive cartoons about... Uh, the Israeli Prime Minister would appear in the Israeli press. This goes over the top because it touches on um, the whole question of blood, and this really does uh, go too far. Now, do you ever censor yourself when you're um, drawing a vile image of whoever it happens to be, David Cameron or Tony Blair or Ed Miliband or Benjamin Netanyahu or George W. Bush? Do you ever say that's gone too far and stop yourself? I, I, uh, that's what that's what drawing a cartoon involves. You have to think about what you do. You have to think very carefully about what you do. And I think um, the, the problem with this old argument is it's uh, you know, extraneous notions like uh, blood libel and uh, uh, are dragged in, and um, sensitivities are, are are talked up when they actually don't. Then the the, 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 the the very word anti-Semitic anti it becomes devalued. They throw it around with such with such abandon and. Right. If there is real anti-Semitism, it's actually getting ignored. A very last word, Stephen Pollard. Well, I simply ask readers, listeners, to have a look at the cartoons and make their own mind up. You know, it's 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 how the individual perceives it. And it, I defy anyone not to see this cartoon as being about Benjamin Netanyahu glorying in the blood of Palestinians. Stephen Pollard, editor of the Jewish Chronicle. Steve Bell from the Guardian. Thank you both.